When Star Citizen released its procedural city planet tech back in 2019, the visuals and capabilities were simply unmatched. Nothing in a game had even come close to the fidelity and scale that was being shown off. However, it's four years later and a lot of other games are starting to catch up. Perhaps not being able to directly rival Star Citizen's scale, but certainly from a visual standpoint, lighting, texturing, rendering has all seen massive improvements in other engines, and that tech is even becoming widely available to indie developers at low cost. By the time Star Citizen ships, will its visuals and technology already be outdated, or are there key components that will allow them to bring the visuals up to modern gaming standards? Let's explore this predicament. Now the Star Citizen game engine is based on the Amazon owned Lumberyard engine, which is based on the Cry engine, you know, the one used for Crisis. In fact, Star Citizen was originally developed on the older Cry engine and then swapped over to Lumberyard to better integrate with Amazon Web Services and cloud computing tech. And the devs have done what can only be described as monumental work to their engine, injecting advanced netcode for multi-crew spaceships, zero-g physics and flight, procedural planet tech for nearly life-size planets that don't require loading screens, and they're currently in the process of updating the render engine to take advantage of the Vulkan Graphics API. Without a doubt, the engine's capabilities have shifted massively to the point where the official, unofficial name is now basically the Star Engine. However, keeping Star Citizen's visuals competitive with new engine tech from Unreal and Unity seems like it could be a losing battle. When juggernauts like Epic Games have teams of hundreds and hundreds of developers constantly working to just simply make Unreal Engine as advanced as it possibly can be, it seems like it might be impossible for CIG to keep up. That said, there is a silver lining. However, it does require sort of a basic defining of the difference between engine tech and artwork. These terms are thrown around very loosely and often clumped together when we talk about video game graphics. For example, the latest Zelda game has incredible artwork and visuals, but it doesn't really have what I would call impressive graphics. Some games use incredible artistry to make up for limitations in rendering power, aka graphics. Zelda is isn't high frame rate, it's not high resolution, it doesn't have high res textures, advanced lighting, or complex materials, but it's still a great looking game due to fantastic artistic direction and working within the limits of the hardware that they had available. Stylized games like this have an advantage where they might be able to age more gracefully compared to something that's aiming to be much more realistic, such as Star Citizen. Luckily, one of Star Citizen's major focal points of its development energy and effort is on its spaceships. With well over a hundred different ships and vehicles currently flyable and drivable, players spend a lot of their time picking the ship that they want to use and taking them out into the verse to perform various tasks. And these ships have been modeled with incredible fidelity, some of the bigger ones taking years to complete. Smooth curves, clean seams, amazing design language, physically based material systems, awesome and complex animations, they could be used in Hollywood level movie scenes. I mean, they kind of are if you count some of the trailer cinematics that we've seen so far. And this is an important thing to point out because it means the ships in Star Citizen likely won't require visual updates for quite some time if ever. Aside from some of the functional reworks that some ships have gone through, if the design of the ship is where they want it to be, then the models and textures can be the foundation for seemingly endless upgrades to the underlying engine tech. And the same goes for the in-game armor, weapons, wearables, and even a lot of the cityscape environments. If you're in-game, spend some time looking at these assets in detail. When I did a deep dive on the weapons in Star Citizen, I was kind of blown away by the fact that even the bullets are modeled out and are physically fired from inside the gun's barrel. It's wild stuff that I simply don't expect from most games, let alone one of this scale. But because everything in Star Citizen is made with such high fidelity, it kind of future-proofs the game to a certain extent. Render pipelines, complex shaders, and post-processing features can be upgraded without needing to manually 
rebuild all the game's functional assets. A good example of this being done is Cyberpunk 2077. While it's certainly not an old or outdated game, Cyberpunk's visuals have been upgraded massively since it first launched. Not only improving the frame rate by huge margins, but also integrating new ray trace lighting systems after the fact. The entire game was done and playable, and then the devs went back and integrated DLSS 3 support, they added ray trace lighting and shadows to create scenes that look honestly better than any game I've ever seen. And this is in part possible because the game's original assets are so high quality. From the characters, to the cars, to the buildings, it all looks phenomenal. They improved the visual tech without having to rebuild the game itself. And this type of upgrade is impossible with many older games that had to model their assets with ultra low poly techniques and didn't have physical based rendering and materials. The textures and models would simply require complete rebuilds to get old games looking better. And that's usually when you hear about like a game remaster, which involves rebuilding all of the old stuff so that it looks comparable to modern games. But with a game as big as Star Citizen, a remaster could take forever ever if you had to actually remake many of the assets. It would basically make it impossible or at least not worth the effort. Fortunately, due to the no cutting corners policy and avoiding faking the game world wherever possible by using smoke and mirrors, Star Citizen is in a fantastic position to be updated and upgraded. This year, Star Citizen has seen the transition from its legacy render tech to its Gen 12 graphics pipeline, which will soon begin the integration of the Volt and API. Things like high dynamic range, dynamic resolution scaling, and massive levels of optimization will come along or slightly after this as well. Things like DLSS 3 could potentially double Star Citizen's frame rate or more since the tech is specifically designed to help games that are mostly CPU bound versus GPU bound, and Star Citizen is very CPU bound. And Vulkan is actually one of the most exciting upgrades that this game will see aside from stuff like server meshing. While computer hardware has improved exponentially since Star Citizen's first alpha builds, the game has also packed itself full of highly complex environments and many players still struggle to get decent frame rates. So asking for higher fidelity visuals and lighting at this point while you're still stuck at 30 FPS seems kind of silly. However, once Vulkan is implemented, it'll have the potential to free up or rather utilize much more of your computer's CPU. And improving the hyper threading and less stress on the game's main thread could lead to massive improvements with the frame rate. And that could certainly help if CIG ever plans to upgrade to some sort of ray traced lighting system. And that seems to be the main area in which modern games are somewhat starting to pull away from Star Citizen's impressive visuals, is their much more realistic lighting. And despite games like Cyberpunk adding it into their game after the fact, well, it's not quite as simple as just flipping RTX on and RTX off. Each lighting system from particle generated lights to ship lights to light from stars and ship engines to apartment and city lights would all have to be updated and tested with ray tracing. Most games that implement some form of ray tracing actually use it sparingly, where perhaps most of the lights aren't even ray trace lights and it's just like the sunlight or one of the main lighting systems. And even then, the number of rays and bounce simulations can be reduced significantly to improve performance at the cost of visual fidelity. Now, another area that might be more challenging to update, but hopefully not impossible, would be some of the more advanced level of detail scaling tech that we're seeing in modern games. You've probably noticed in a lot of games, certainly in Star Citizen, is the pop-in effect. This is particularly noticeable when flying over long stretches of land. Trees and terrain up close to you might look really good in high detail, where as stuff gets further away, the geometry and shadows begin to scale back and pop out of existence at times. The transition for this can be really jarring, and it serves as a constant reminder that, well, you're playing a game and it's doing all kinds of back-end tricks to try and get your scene rendering properly. However, Unreal Engine 5's new Nanite system is simply incredible in that it no longer requires developers to make all these different level of detail models for their games that need to be swapped out at different distances. Instead, it automatically generates level of detail according to the topological complexity of the clusters of geometry. And it does this intelligently at all times, creating scenes that both run faster and look better. 
forest rendered in Nana and Lumen look impeccable at all distances and run even faster than a traditional level of detail scaling forest. This is a huge upgrade in engine technology and frankly it's just going to become industry standard. Considering that the Unity engine is building similar options that work as plugins, it seems possible Star Citizen could begin to implement this type of tech as well. And frankly, it makes a lot of asset development easier since a lot of time and effort is put into level of detail model scaling. If artists didn't have to worry so much about level of detail scaling, it would be a huge workflow improvement for shipbuilders and asset designers, as is proving to be a huge workflow improvement in Unreal Engine 5. Now, Star Citizen has been manually updating certain aspects of its visuals as they become more outdated. The character models have already gone through several updates to make them more realistic, but there's still many areas of the persistent universe that feel clunky and outdated, due in my opinion to lighting systems and level of detail issues in older or poorly made shaders in certain planets or moons or areas of the system. Stanton, the massive solar system in which Star Citizen is currently played, has a lot of areas, some of which have been updated recently and and some of which are pretty outdated. The important thing is that Star Citizen has been built to be high fidelity in most regards, something that could be and has been considered unnecessary or even a criticism of where efforts were being spent in the early days of development may actually have future-proofed this game in a lot of important ways. I'm personally not too worried about Star Citizen's ability to improve or update its visuals as needed, since it's less about rebuilding assets and more about back-end improvements and systems. And while updating lighting engines or level of detail scaling engines isn't necessarily a simple task, it's considerably easier than rebuilding all of the assets in the game. By the time Star Citizen is finished, will the rest of the game industry have surpassed it or will the insane level of detail and design work allow the game to maintain an impressive if not outright jaw-dropping presentation? far into the future. Let me know in the comments. And up next, check out this video showing, well, the detail and fidelity of Star Citizen's weapon systems. They're incredibly impressive. As always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.